Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will see the part 2 to deploy the container as application on the AKS service. We have already configured our AKS in the previous video. In this part, we are deploying a containerized application onto that AKS. And that AKS will help us to orchestrate containers when we scale from few nodes to multiple nodes which on which we are deploying our docker based containerized application that we are not deploying onto the multiple vms because we have to configure each and every vm separately with the operating system latest patches software patches the web server software and the web application right so now we'll explore how to create workloads in the aks cluster First of all, what is a container registry? Let me just go to the portal and take it from there. Here you see the uh, AKS. Now if I open up a separate tab here and I see what a container registry is. A container registry would allow me to store container images safely in the cloud for later deployment. I can think uh, um, you can think the container registry as an archive that would store multiple versions of the container image and the each image that is stored would have a tag assigned for identification for example i might have the image let's say my ashish dash website with the latest tag which would be a different version of the image with the tag ashish website v1.0.0 so i would have multiple versions of a single image and i can differentiate that which one is the latest and the container registry might it can be a public or a private registry private registries require credentials to access and uh, download the images and uh, the public would not have the access to would not require credentials to access and download images and the Kubernetes only allow you to deploy images hosted in the container registry. Creating a primary registry will normally be a part of your standard AKS deployment strategy. So if I go to my home and now if I create a container registry, I'm going to click on create a resource. And I'm going to click on container registry. I'm going to click on it to create one. I'm going to create a registry. I'm going to select the resource group. I'm going to enter the registry name. Test ACR, your container registry. East US standard size and under networking. Encryption default and I'm going to click on review and create. It will create the registry for me. And the use of the registry would be that there is a concept called Kubernetes pod. So the Kubernetes pod would group the container and applications into a logical structure. These pods have no intelligence and are composed of one or more application containers. So inside these pods, my application would be deployed as a container. And each one has an IP address, network rules and exposed ports. For example, if you wanted to search all workloads related to Ashish dead website application, you will query the cluster for ports with the label app and the value for the Ashish dead website. And the Kubernetes deployment is an evolution of ports. A deployment would wrap the ports into an intelligent object that allows them to scale out. We can easily duplicate and scale the application to support more load without the need to configure complex network routing rules. And there is an also concept called Kubernetes manifest files and these files would allow us to describe the workloads in the YAML format and would simplify the deployment of my Kubernetes object management. 
Now imagine you have to deploy a workload by hand. You would need to think about and manage several aspects. You would need to create a container, select a specific node. You have to wrap it in a pod. You have to run the pod. You have to monitor the execution and so on. Manifest files would contain all the information that's needed to create and manage the described workload. And the Kubernetes label would allow me to logically group Kubernetes objects and these labels would enable the system to query the cluster for objects that match a label with a specific name. And now after this validation has passed, I'm going to click on create so that it can create a container registry. And as soon as it is done, I'm going to sign in to this container registry and push a container image to this container registry so that I can use that image and deploy it on my AKS cluster that I have created in the same resource group. So I'm going to go to my container registry. This is my container registry. And the new container registry would require authentication before I can push the container image. And uh, if you need this information in the future, you can access the container registry in the Azure portal. And one of the benefits of using ACR is that we don't need to sign into our registry once we are logged in with our Azure account or Azure CLI. And if you need to log in without Azure CLI, you have to go to your registry and you have to go to the access key tab like this. And this is your, on this tab, you'll find the registry name, login server name. This is your registry name. This is your login server name. and password information. Now let's say I have to clone the web app from the GitHub repository and uh, change it to the directory. So I am gonna wait, wait, wait. So now I'm gonna do this, open up the cloud shell. It will launch and I'm gonna clone this here it will it is cloning it to the ms learn aks deployment folder and now i'm going to go to this folder i'm here i'm go here now I'm inside that folder in which i have cloned the code from the github repository now i am going to run the az acr build command to build and push the container image to my registry so now i'm going to type in az acr build and now i'm going to specify the image that i want to upload so it would be i'm picking that up from the microsoft documentation my registry name is test ACR sir. right and the file that I'm going to use is already present in the folder in the repo that I have cloned and I'm going to use dash so that I want to push I want to build the image using the docker file that is present in this current working directory and I'm going to push this image to the Azure container registry, which is this. Don't forget to mention this dot because then the file, the image would not be built in the current working directory. Hit enter. It is sending the request. It is downloading the source code and it is building an image and it is now reading the package list from here. This all is defined in the, the Docker file that I'm pushing. Now it has uh, performing different operations that are mentioned in that file that I have using which I am uh, building an image. If I just scroll it up so that you can see the list of commands that it is performing using the AZ ACR build command and then using an image which is Contoso website and now building an image 
using the Docker file that is being present here. Using the git clone command again for that website. In here, it is exposing the port 80 because it was already mentioned in the Docker file. As I told you earlier, I will make a separate video series wherein I will show you how to create a Docker file. What is a Docker file? What are the different components present in the Docker file? Now it is all set. It has been pushed. And now if you would uh, see this. Click on overview. Come here. If you would click on repositories. In the container registry. It is the repository that we created to build an image. And this is the latest tag that is present. Click on it. And if you want to pull this image from this registry, you would use the docker pull command to pull this image. And this is the manifest file of that image that you can see in the GUI. And the tag is the latest one because we have created it. We have we implemented this tag so that we can identify that it is the latest image. Right. This is it. And now if you want to create a deployment manifest, you create a deployment manifest to deploy your application. The manifest file would allow you to define what type of resource you want to deploy and all the details associated with the workload. Kubernetes groups containers into logical structures called pods, which have no intelligence. Deployment, this deployment manifest would add the missing intelligence to create the application that you want to create. Now, how would you create a deployment file? So you would do, you will do touch deployment.yaml. So it will create a deployment file you create it and now if you would open the integrated editor in the cloud shell by typing code dot it will open up the integrated editor and you this is your uh, project this is your docker file you can see the content here it is running the curl command it is using the working directory exposing port 80 so we used this docker file to create an image now i created a deployment.yml file in here and i would open up the content in this yaml file which would add the first two keys to tell kubernetes the api version the kind of manifest i am creating and the name of the deployment and i will use this uh, file to identify and query the deployment information when i'll use kubectl right so let me just grab it and paste it here this is it right and a deployment would wrap a pod we make a use of template we will make a use of the template uh, definition to define the pod information within the manifest file and the template is placed in the manifest file under the deployment specification section so i have this api version i have the kind of uh, deployment the kind of workloads we are creating I am creating a metadata file which would name is the contours of website and now I will also add the spec specifications here so I'll do this so I'll add specification template metadata labels and the app name is contours of website so the pods would pods would not have the given names and when they are created inside the deployment the pods name will be that deployments name with the random id added to the end now if you will notice the use of the labels key you add the labels key to allow deployments to find any group pods a pod wraps one or more containers all pods have a specification section and the pods would have a specification section that allows you to define the container inside that pod so inside a pod we have a container and the pod runs on the nodes so now i will update the this deployment.yml file to define all the containers 
so i added these things into the my deployment.yml file the containers key would is an array of container specifications because a pod can have one or more containers the specification defines an image name resources where UUID is a generated ID to identify all resources. So it's a good practice to define a minimum and a maximum amount of resources the app is allowed. Now we'll have the update the deployment.yml file to match the following YAML. I'm updating it with the ACR name. So I added a memory, I added the limits, I added the everything here. And I'll also update uh, to define the ports this container will expose externally through the ports key the ports key is an array of objects which means that a container in a port can expose multiple ports with the multiple names and in here i will update my acr name that is test acr here it is i click on save I click on close editor looks good to me and now I will apply the manifest file so I'll use cube ctl apply dash f deployment.yml file it is created now I'll run the kubectl get deploy command to check if the deployment was successful. kubectl get deploy your uh, contoso website. Up to date is 1. It is ready. Age is 24 seconds. Now if I'll do kubectl get ports it is an error image pull so it is not working correctly i am in the the status should have been running wherein it says error image pull so in my case the lab was not successful but you know the process right how you do it and deploy it on the acs or oh, AKS. So I hope this was informative to all of you guys. In the next video, we'll try to enable the network, uh, the network access to an application. So I hope this was informative for all of you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Have a good day.